So urban design, we've, urban design's been in the spotlight. I recall when urban design was not centre stage and it was really a campaign, a crusade to get people to understand what urban design was about. I think we then had a golden decade or 15 years when successive governments were for urban design. We had CABE uh, producing uh, best practice guidance. We all know what best practice guidance is. So my question is, are we there yet? Um, this is adapted from Professor Brian Goody uh, at Oxford Brooks, if you know him. He wrote an article in, I think, what was maybe in building design or planning several decades ago, and he, say, he set out the ground for urban design. Um, we've both forgotten exactly what he said, so if it is what he says, I, it's his credit. If I got it wrong, it's, 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 it's my fault. But in summary, he set out that urban design was an activity that worked across different land ownerships, across different political boundaries, delivered through a variety of time frames, through a number of agencies, a wide range of disciplines, and brought social, economic, as well as environmental benefits. So that was the scope for what urban design was supposed to be about in the early days. And I really want to ask you three questions in, in trying to address that. Um, are, are we there yet? And the first question is, are we really making towns or are we simply building single-use estates? Um, my work is up and down the country as well in capital areas. And I see local plans being driven by a five-year land supply, which is a spreadsheet exercise trying to allocate enough area of land for different uses. The selection of sites, um, landowners and consultants are required to come forward with suggestions for sites. That then follows a sort of sieve mapping exercise. And those blobs which have the fewest newts, the least opposition, tends to get designated for development and these areas are very often the least well connected sites and I would suggest that at least half of the urban design decisions are implicitly made in that step of site allocation. If it's not well connected then that will determine exactly what uses, what mixed uses you can use and so on. Design isn't something that happens inside the blob once it's being allocated. So. The sites we get invited to look at very often on behalf of local authorities, we either call them blobs on a map, they don't relate to very much, or it's another ring on the onion, which seems a favourite. I was going to show plans, but I thought I don't want to embarrass too many people, but you know what I mean. The second question is, is that does our preoccupation with land use planning result in inflexible towns? And the list I've got here is from Professor uh, Michael Keith and his program, The Flexible City uh, at Oxford University. And what he has to say is basically, we cannot predict detailed land uses. Um, the, the way we use and our needs for cities are being changed through aging and demographic profiles, shifting global economy, um, our identity to what do we belong, the city, the city region, the town, the village, UK, Scotland, cultural capital moves around, forms of governance change quite regularly, technology changes, has huge implications on land use, um, whether it's uh, the, 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 the fad for the educational villages where all the schools were lumped together in one area, as happened in Lincolnshire, or health services being put together on a single plot and now there are specialist hospitals um, at a regional level. Um, and our patterns of uh, purchase, consumption, internet, etc. So our capability of predicting exactly what land uses we need, he suggests, is pretty limited. And yet we try and fix things with huge amounts of precision. Um, areas for new neighbourhoods, we have design and access statements um, that tend to fix every last detail and, in my view, give very little scope for adaptation to the people who are going to come and live there. Um, third question I've got for you is, and here's a fair question for a room full of urban designers, does anyone have a, a clear idea of what is an appropriate urban form for the 21st century? What I see at the moment is development being driven by blobs, 
roughly one to two hundred houses or it might be um, an enterprise zone, sim similar zone for, for, for industry. Um, there's calls for new towns, labour policy, there's calls for suburbs and I'd suggest that all of these have a role to play, they all have a place. Um, but do they really focus on the intelligent growth of cities, towns and villages? So just returning to my proposition, um, I don't think we are there yet. We're usually operating within a single uh, political boundary. Uh, sites are land assembled into single land ownership. We have a single time frame in which these plans are delivered through a single agency which, which is assembled for the purpose. I think we work in multidisciplinary rather than interdisciplinary terms, which is the core of what urban design ought to be about. And they're fundamentally physical plans. And I think perhaps we're losing some sight of the, of the wider economic and social um, goals. So I've got 10 priorities um, for us as urban designers. And apologies for those who saw my three minute uh, pedicure earlier. But first of all, I think we should be looking at pieces of town, not housing or enterprise zones. We should be reconnecting with planning towns. I think the land use plan should be replaced by urban form plans, plans which, which focus on urban form and which can be coloured. They can be coloured in a multitude of different land uses in different ways and over time. We should be producing more frameworks rather than master plans, which is attempting to be too fixed, far too prescriptive, and we should be building in capacity for adaption. I would like to see design and access statements that instead of specifying more and more detail, actually say how areas can change in terms of land use and buildings can change in use over time. I think we should get better at producing physical plans. We've seen an awful lot of policy making over, over, the, over the last decade. And I see far too many uh, local plan diagrams getting built out in, in, in almost two-dimensional form. So I think we need to get better at designing in 3D. We are alone in Europe in not pursuing to any great extent pot-based urbanism. Um, Self-build or uh, custom-build uh, the unit seems to be tailored for the volume development industry, which works hand in hand with the planning industry, and I'd suggest the, main, the major political parties. And sustainability, we see more preoccupied with energy generation rather than building in true sustainability measures. I think we need to re-establish and preach the need for towns. Um, we hear more about suburbs later. I think suburbs do have their place. For me, the place for a suburb is in the context of a town. And remember who our real clients are, which are the people who will live in what we build. So there's 10 points for urban designers. Three possible initiatives for government. Um, I will put these into the pot for your debate and discussion and, uh, and I'm hopefully prompt some further ideas. But the first thing we, we might campaign on is local plans. Within, without changing the local plan system, we could ask for local plans to be driven by urban form rather than land use. I think that would be a huge benefit. And utilize urban design skills in doing that rather than urban designers coming on board to fill in the, the blob inside the red line too late in the day. Um, the second initiative we might campaign on is flexible towns. Very few new development, I think, has the opportunity or the means to grow into itself. Uh, <coughs> partly because of its location, um, deficiencies in the way it connects to the rest of the town. Um, design and access statements a discussion by itself, but I think they could be very brief documents, and as I've said, including how areas can adapt and grow over time. We shouldn't try and fix everything. Uh, the third initiative, um, I'm 
suggesting is growth towns. I don't think there is an ideal form or an ideal size for any settlements. All settlements go through a series of thresholds as they grow. And I think an intelligent approach to growing villages, towns and cities um, would be worthwhile. I see very little coming forward in local plans that is putting forward coherent spatial plans. And the initiative we might learn lessons from is the Growth Point initiative, where well-considered documents were put together for the growth of a town in economic terms, as well as um, uh, housing and social terms and green infrastructure. And I think government could do worse than invite bids for growth towns. It doesn't have to be a town, it could be city status. There are many market towns which are dying on their feet, few thousand in population that urgently um, need a, a larger economic base. But there are towns that I think will be very interested in bidding for growth, and there's a suggested mechanism for that. There's the CIL levy. If that were returned to the town, 5,000 house growth would produce in the order of 50 million towns rather than some rather... Um, minor handful of pennies being handed back to the local community, I think it would lead to regeneration of the whole town. So those are my 10 points for urban designers and my three points for government, and I'll pass the baton on to Nicholas Falcon. Thanks so much, Roger.